is this place? It's not on any surveys I know of. Detected. Designated outsider. This is an undisclosed secret location. Please identify purpose or depart. Acknowledging receipt of emergency request. Explanation deemed acceptable. Clearance granted to crucible. Outsider will deliver 150 units of copper. Compensation will be dispensed. Tobias, stand down. We have a visitor. Reminder, deliver required material. End of conversation. This... this is incredible. For so long we hoped for any... visit, and the day has finally arrived. We see no one, ever. Your arrival is truly an historic one, but many fear what it portends. The societies have closed their doors and are arguing about what to do, while the rest hide to see which way the wind blows. Franklin would know what to do. He's the oldest among us. You should talk with him. Give it time, and I'm sure the others will come out. For curiosity's sake, if nothing else. When your ship landed, I feared the robots would shoot you on sight. I am greatly relieved that they let you enter our community. But you come during a delicate time. Everyone will seek to use your arrival to further their own ends. You ask a question you already know the answer to. Yes, of course. I have need of you, but if you have a good heart and a quick mind, I am sure you will see my point of view. No, we most certainly do not. Our relationship with them is a matter of some debate. As well you should. I am Franklin Delano Roosevelt, leader of the Pragmatist Society. Well, it is gratifying that even after all these years, my name isn't entirely forgot. You see, I was an American president. Well, not literally, but in a sense I was. Everyone that lives here are clones. Some of us are clones of the greatest figures of history, and others, well, we don't rightly know. When we die, and some of us die quite often, we are brought back. I cannot imagine how strange this must sound to an outsider. Is it? I wish I could illuminate you on this, but we are as ignorant of the technology which brought us into being as we are of the outside world. Not at all. I have had occasion to see death more than anyone. When someone dies, all they have accomplished here in Crucible, all of their deeds, thoughts, are gone. And when they come back, they are different, modified. 
The believers say they are improved. Being reborn can take years, sometimes over a decade. But everyone comes back. Now there is the question, isn't it? I do not have FDR's memories, but I know every nuance of his life and times. Well, as, as much as history records, I confess I, I feel an undeniable affinity towards him. But no, I, I am my own man, but not all of us see it that way. I could see how confusing this may be, even frustrating. But if it's any consolation, many of us feel the same, and we live here. After decades, centuries, of trying to figure it out ourselves, there is so very much we don't know either. The robots clone us for a reason, their so-called mission. But what that is, and what we should do about it, is something the societies disagree about. Sometimes violently. It's best you meet with the other societies, and after, I promise I'll explain the pragmatists' position on matters. It is one of the few concrete things we know about Crucible. If you want to truly know about the mission, the Believers will tell you all about it. In fact, it can be hard to get them to stop talking about it. After you meet with them, I'll share my position. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Word has been sent, so the street should be full again. There is more I would talk with you about, but I would not take advantage of your ignorance. Go speak with the Monirinus and Genghis Khan. I might have some stuff you could use in stock. Welcome to town, stranger. Consider me part of the welcoming committee. The name's Wyatt Earp, and I'd be most pleased if you'd use one of the spare rooms during your stay. For a modest fee, of course. You and me both there. I do the best I can to uphold the law, but the societies make that difficult. I expect I've had as much success restraining Genghis as the Chinese did. I do what I can. Roosevelt and I are both of the same mind on that. I'm for whatever side wants to keep the peace. It means that the pragmatists and I are often on the same side of things. But you might be surprised the number of times I've had to ask some of them to back off some nonsense. <laughs> I can work with that. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay. And by the by, I may have access to some essentials I've picked up over the years. Happy to sell them to you. The customer is always right. <laughs> you're always welcome back. You don't get older? I hope your arrival doesn't mean more violence. You're the most exciting thing that's happened, well, ever. In my darkest hours, I feared that we were all that was left of humanity. Your ship, she's a beauty. It travels the stars, right? Tell me, what's it like out there? <sighs> a 
that's just how I imagine it. My name's Amelia Earhart. When I first woke up in this place, in my head, I knew all about my namesake, her life and her accomplishments. But I also knew how to fly a starship, reactor limits, thrust acceleration vectors and everything. In my mind's eye, I can imagine flying out there, touching heaven itself. And yet, cruelly, here I sit. The facility keeps us alive, fed, and protected, but they do a terrible job of informing us of anything at all. My guess is the facility thought they might need a pilot one day, but your guess is as good as mine. Funny, some of us have had the same thought about you. Listen, I know you owe me nothing at all, but I would do anything to get off of here. I know the societies want who knows what from you for who knows why, and I don't want to get involved in any politics. I just want, for my single self, a chance to explore. Well, you can't blame me for asking. Do you want to talk about anything else? No, I don't. I consider myself a most ardent admirer of hers. She feels like... family. Distant family. I like to think we both share a kindred spirit of adventure, though. She broke so many barriers in her life. I would love the same opportunity one day. I have a few choice unchristian thoughts about some of them. But I'm going to stay out of it. Listen, I'd understand you making any decision you have to regarding them. Any at all. I just hope you judge me separate. I don't wish harm on anyone. I just want to explore. Thanks for your time. I had hoped you would visit me. Good. Know that you stand before Queen Amanirinas of the Kush, queen of a dead kingdom on a dead world. But I earned my name, and even the sands of time cannot take it from me. In truly ancient times, my land lay south of Egypt, a harsh country. History is enamored of my contemporary Cleopatra, but she would have withered and died had she tried to rule my land. Your courtesy is appreciated, even though it rings hollow. My subjects are all dust. If you don't believe me, know you are not alone. Some clones deride me behind my back. I know this. But I feel in my bones that I am a Manirinas for true, the great and the terrible to those who would oppose me. I remember things no one has told me. Memories of faces, betrayers, lovers, allies, and enemies. And the smells, the right scent. And I close my eyes, and I can picture all of it so vividly. It aches my heart, my home, my kingdom. If your mind and heart remain open, you will see the truth of it. Once, I called upon mighty armies. However, on Crucible I still lead. Have you heard of the Believers? Have you heard of the mission? We are the ones who will take our rightful place in these settled systems to bring in a new glorious age and break the endless cycles of oppression and greed. 
so many scoff at the mission. Before we are reborn here, there are words all of us are told. That we are the chosen. We are meant to better ourselves. To learn, grow, and thrive. All of us represent the greatest figures in our history. Who better to lead the settled systems to a new golden age? If we could do it ourselves, we would have, years ago. I do not care if you think my plan is insane. But what I want, what we want, is a chance to prove to the facility we are ready. When someone has achieved their potential, the facility is supposed to set us free among the stars. But the machines have been breaking more and more over the years. And no one has ever been deemed worthy. I need your help to properly fix the facility so that we can prove ourselves and claim our birthright. The facility is another place on this very planet. A place we cannot go. As much as we dream of it. I need you to go to the facility. The robots and what drives them is not here. The facility is where they come from. Somewhere far to the east. None of us can travel there. But you can go there, please. And see if the facility can be repaired. Then report back to me. stars come to see me and you're not afraid to get your hands dirty I guess the world out there is not so different than here Genghis Khan a pleasure to meet you manners cost me nothing but make no mistake I will do whatever it takes to escape this prison I am pleased that the dangers out here are of no concern to you. You cannot be fully human if you trap yourself behind walls. I would provide fresh meat for my society, so we don't get fat off the robots. Franklin and I see eye to eye on very little. But even he appreciates this. And I always hope to see some means of escape. Perhaps our luck has finally changed. The robots taught me many things any Mongol would know. So, hunting game, even such as this, is little challenge to me. So Franklin told you of us, oh, that we're clones? Some of us think that makes us special. That the deeds of our namesakes are somehow ours. But that is blind arrogance. We are just people. Same as you. Same as anyone. None at all. It is as if I were a student of his life and times from an early age. 
I know so much about him, but that doesn't mean I am him. I am me, and I am content with this. Perhaps you are right. Certainly, many in Crucible would agree. Ah, but all this talk gets us nowhere. Too many of the others grovel at the feet of the damned robots, trying to play their roles in a broken game. The Renegades will not submit, and one day, we will be free. A prison of the mind and the body. Crucible holds out a throne and says, Obey, and it is yours. But thrones are meant to be taken, not handed to you by a machine. But it is a tantalizing lie that keeps the others in line. Were it that easy? I have died a dozen deaths trying to find a way out of Crucible. You get too far or disobey too much, then death. Crucible holds our lives in its hands. But now the robots have made a grave mistake. You. You can go where none of us can. You hold our future in your hands, and all the societies know it. I sense fire in you. Good. You will need it. You know of the facility, yes? Go there and make the machines let us leave. It is not much to ask, and it will set us free. Systems needs us. We just need to pass the test. So, you have heard from the other societies. I must confess, I'm very curious what an outsider thought of them and their positions. You might be the first objectively neutral party we've ever come across. A very diplomatic approach. The facility has gathered some of the most obstinate and dangerous personages throughout history. It has told them that they should lead in a golden age via whatever means they see appropriate. Setting us all loose, part or as a whole, would invite disaster. We are barely fit to lead ourselves. Exceptionally so, but the pragmatists are different. It is evident that the facility is decaying. It is both unsustainable and unwise for us to fix and maintain the status quo. Our community must be weaned off the machines, learn how to build, grow, and govern ourselves allowed to raise families so we can pass our lessons to the next generation and to die when our allotted time is finished. One day we will be worthy of going to the stars. We are just not there yet. Yes, and not to be indelicate, not for lack of trying. 
Are we even human in this state? We have no future, only the past. Do not listen to passion. Genghis can be very persuasive, but he's a fool. In some sense, we are an abomination, a science project made for unknown ends and with uncertain results. Once we are fully human, fully self-reliant, then we should be allowed to join the settled systems. You have no idea how profoundly grateful I am to hear that. Go to the facility and see what can be done. Over here! Hey, we need to talk! I would kill listeners. It's not safe to talk here. It's about Roosevelt. There's something you need to know. Not here. If he found out I'm even talking to you about this... Thank you. There's a, well, a cave. Just outside town. No chance of us being listened in on. Please, come as quick as you can. Ideally, before you go to the facility. Uh, I hope so. I'll meet you at the cave. But if they all fail? Then we will most likely die. Game. I, I just can't take a chance. These clones, they, they're psychotic, crazy. If they find out, I'm sorry. I, I just can't take the chance. You're just too smart. I'm not Wyatt Earp. I wish. God, how I wish I was. I was cloned off a monster. America's first serial killer, H.H. Holmes. Wait. Smiley, the local innkeep. A serial killer? Whoa. He was a deranged lunatic on old Earth. In the 1890s, he owned a hotel. He'd lure people there in this crazy hotel with all sorts of terrible rooms but I'm not him you gotta believe me it's like a living nightmare if you go to the facility I know you'd find out who I am and if you let any of these bloodthirsty maniacs know they'd kill me but no that wouldn't be the end. Every time my new clone would appear, death, torture, pure hell. I'm afraid it's you or me. I'm going to kill you.
I just don't see a way out. Wyatt Earp was a hero. Maybe I can. I never asked to be H.H. H. Holmes. He was a monster. I'm... I'm gonna trust you, okay? Just don't tell anyone. This... this never happened. Landing on new planets like this never gets old.
Critters don't like humans in their territory.
you. Good to see you. I, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate your advice. After our last talk, I was really worried what you'd say, but I always feel better. Thank you. Cora's grandpa, good old Jacob, well, he just will not stop pestering me to see Cora, and that's complicated. He is not my favorite topic of conversation. My early years, they uh, weren't good. My mother died when I was seven. Some people have such strong memories from their early life. Me, I mean, I remember her. I have some pictures. I remember the feelings, but just a few clear memories. She banged up her knee real good in an accident. So she went in for knee replacement. I, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate your advice. After our last talk, Cora's grandpa, and that's complicated. I mean, can you blame them? She's something else. But things with my dad. My early years, they uh, weren't good. My mother died when I was seven. Some people have such strong memories from their early life. Me, I mean, I remember her. I have some pictures. I remember the feelings, but just a few clear memories. She banged up her knee real good in an accident. So she went in for knee replacement. It's supposed to be routine, but that damn anesthesiologist dropped the ball. And one day mom's fine. When the next doctors take her away. She had these truly ancient cameras, like caveman type things. To the room with a red light, she developed pictures she took in this chemical bath. I remember sitting on a stool, looking up at them slowly fading in, and it was like alchemy to me then. And that's all I have, just glimpses like that. Oh, it's all right. It's ancient history. So, Jacob raised me on his own, and... Shit, maybe I don't give him enough credit. I mean, I know how tough it is, but he was strict, hard. Dad was a longtime civil servant, a big man in governments, and he had a future all laid out for me. Man, could he get his hooks into you. He was scary good at that. At his height, he was some sort of trade minister. A very prominent man in Aquila City. And after I came along, he stepped down to a lower posting. 
We saw it a finger in trade all over the Collective. I can't deny it. He sacrificed a lot to be closer to Mom and me. You know me too well, but I tried. I felt the weight of legacy. I wanted to do him proud. He said I had to learn the business, run some freight, see how credits flow, speak the language. Meanwhile, he's working some angle for a government job for me after. That sounded even more miserable than what I was doing. Imagining you around back then, let's just say you would have been, uh, distracting. But I had a point, <laughs> if I could remember it. Even after I was with the Rangers, Dad was just always kneeling, angling for me to join the government. But by then I knew myself more, and I could stand up to him. And Lillian, well, she helped. If I let Jacob into Cora's life, he'll dream up some big future for her and tie her into knots like he did with me. A man could teach a master class in manipulation. Yeah, but she's only 12, and... <laughs> Hell, I see what you did there. If I just flat out say no, I'm a hypocrite, right? <sighs> I guess I got more to think about.
What is this place? It's not on any surveys I know of. Just read about them. A haiku, huh? That sounds exciting. Let's hear it. Okay. It's called Space. <clears throat> space is cold and dark. Starships fly there like comets, carrying us home. It's not bad. Hey, will you write it down so I can carry a copy with me? I'll copy down too. You know how you lose things. I still don't know how you lost that picture of Nibbles the Comet Eating Bunny. It is still hard to accept a stranger in our midst. We are not 100% sure, but I have a theory. The facility has been unreliable as long as I've been alive. My guess is that they are historical figures that just didn't get a proper education. Who's to say what Julius Caesar actually looked like? or some modern person of note that we wouldn't even know about. Whoever they are, though, they are as smart and capable as the ones that know their identity. My feelings about my namesake are complicated. He was a great but flawed human being. On one hand, he guided a country through the ravages of depression and war, admirably. He tirelessly fought to improve the lives of the poor and disadvantaged. But as a husband, he was unfaithful. And as a colleague, he was a consummate politician, which is sometimes good, often distasteful. He was truly a great man, and I must confess, I am proud to share his heritage. We're working with FDR. I still can't get over it. Let me see. Hmm. You have no idea what a reassurance it is to learn even these hints of our past. It sounds like the facility is in ruins, but perhaps the restricted section is intact? Think of the answers it must contain, and perhaps a way to help us become self-sufficient. But there is no security override code here. I, I would know. Think. To think that Crucible was not our first home. And Genghis Khan destroyed it. I have told people time and time again that the Renegade will be the death of us all. 
And they already were once. The only thing clear to me is despite the facility's efforts, we haven't grown at all. Galathea's sister ship. Yes, if it can be found. Certainly, they had the capability of going into the heart of the facility. If anyone can figure a manner of locating the Beagle, it's Ada Lovelace. I'll radio her and explain the situation. I'm sure she will make every effort to assist. Warning delivered. So we did come from a spaceship. Of course we did. And there's another out there? What was the Beagle? Why did she and the Galathea part? But all of that in time. First, we must find her. She's not in this star system. I would have spotted her. Hmm... I've studied the celestial bodies for years. No trace of a spaceship in orbit here or around the other planets. The radio telescope. It has a default position. It resets every morning. I always wondered. Why point at Bell 5? Petty frustration I've dealt with for years. But perhaps the facility looks for her sister. Yes. Yes, it makes sense. I can send you the coordinates. The Bell Star system is not far. The facility communicates via a secure frequency. When you arrive, tune into that.
I'm sorry. Heat beaches can turn into what? Terramorphs. Giant carapace encrusted tanks. Hence the new scanning protocols. On our watch, no heat leech enters this city. Understood? Understood. All right. Let's get out here then. Hey, what can I do for you? Need some work done? Sure, how about it? Anything I can help you with? Sure, how about it?
working hard, Captain. What's happening, darling? Sorry to pull you aside like this, but I wanted to take a moment to congratulate you. Taking those steps to eradicate the Terramorph threat is essential to the safety of every living thing in the settled systems. You should be proud. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you treated the situation with the urgency it deserved. I only wish that the United Colonies chose to exterminate the Terramorphs with the experimental microbe instead of choosing this ridiculous Asili solution. Apparently, their decision was based on your recommendation. <sighs> that was a risky choice you've made. Minimal risk, are you sure? The Asili solution might take years, perhaps even decades. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking for humankind. That sounds far too risky to me. Well, I'm disappointed that you didn't trust the science. Unfortunately, locking away the Lazarus plant instead of eliminating it adds to the risk. Anything that accelerates the Terramorph life cycle should have been completely removed from the equation. Why take the chance? You haven't let me down. You've simply given me cause for concern. I'll tell you what. Let's put this past us, shall we? I'm sure everything will work out in the end. I'm sorry if I've hurt you in any way. I wouldn't want anything like this to come between us. Have any new books for me? What is it? It is a relief to know that the Terramorphs are being dealt with. But are you sure this Asilis creature is the right way to do it? I can understand that line of thinking, but even when talking about a species like the Terramorph? This decision means the Terramorphs will remain a threat for years to come, if not longer. And that is assuming it works at all. I suppose we shall. Not that it matters, since the decision was made. And I must say, I find it curious that you would agree keeping the Lazarus plant around is a good idea. It seems an additional, unnecessary risk. I do not think some potential future use outweighs the risk it poses now. At least the Freestar Collective will also know of its existence. Otherwise, I worry it would be too tempting for the UC to use as a weapon. Well, it is good to know that this particular threat is behind us, and you have done a service to all who live in the settled systems.
locked in. Captain. It is pleasant to see you. This place is bringing the heat. What? I can do dad jokes.
All green on release. We're free to fly. This is Franklin Roosevelt. We have an urgent situation developing on Crucible. Please, please, come immediately. Before it's too late. Thank God you're here. Genghis has issued an ultimatum. He will attack the Pragmatist Society with everything he's got, unless you meet with him. I fear Amon Arenas is siding with him too. We are on the brink of war. A war I will not shrink from. Not when we are so close to victory. I do have a society to manage. Is something the matter?
I do have other business. I do have a society to manage. I do have other business. Doubtful. Genghis and I have a long history, always at cross purposes. But worryingly, a monorenus may be with him. It's possible. We can convince her to back down. He knows you have seen the facility. And if you have been there, then anything is possible. So he threatens violence to ensure his voice is heard. I will send a message. We are meeting under flag of truce, something sacred to us. So, no matter how much he vexes you, keep your gun holstered. In my darkest hours, I feared that we were all that was left of humanity. The Outsider, Franklin. Amanorinus, Genghis. I had hoped we would not be meeting like this after so short a respite from war. You drove us here, Franklin. Did you think we would let the Outsider just hand the Pragmatist victory? Stranger, if you do not change your course, there will be none of the Pragmatists alive to help. Then let the renegades go free. Roosevelt can do whatever he wants with the others. This is not what we agreed, Genghis. Only those who have passed the test can leave Crucible. This is my test. Here and now. And I intend to pass it. In blood, if I have. Fine, we are of one mind on this. The facility and its test and mission are flawed, broken. We all know it. And if you are allowed to author that test, then 
You control us all. So the answer is we are all imprisoned here? You leave us no choice but to join the renegades and end your society. Twenty years. What? We have to stand on our own two feet to earn a chance at freedom. So let the outsider reprogram the facility, and for 20 years we work together to make Crucible truly ours. And after, we institute a test, which we both offer with mutual veto power, and any who pass may leave. Do not let the politician cloud your head with pretty words. You think I would accept this? We... We have been going in circles for so long. We could kill them. Kill them all. And then we can dictate any terms we like. I only lead my people to battle when I must. Do you promise, Mr. Roosevelt, a fair test? One that we can pass in our lifetime? I will not make it easy, but it will be, as you say, fair. No! Come on, Arenas. This is a trick! Roosevelt has done many things that infuriate me. But his honor? I have never had to question. The believers will not fight. Let the gods decide which of you is right. You. You are a very odd one. Who knows what the future holds? You will regret this, Samanarinas. Mightily. Then we will meet on the field of battle. The heavens will judge who is worthy. So be it. We have fortified the society, but this will never end until Genghis is dead. He is the linchpin. If you take him out, I know an armistice can be reached. <sighs> yes. But that is on their heads, not ours. This is not something I am asking. It is something that they are demanding of you. They will keep trying to kill you until we put an end to this. It is over. Why does it always come down to force? I hope your settled systems has truly learned from the past. Clearly, we have not. To be a leader, a true leader, you must make terrible choices and then live with them. If it is any consolation, they gave us no choice. Please, 
go to the facility and make it so that it will obey my instructions so we can finally grow as a people. Blood runs in the streets again. I had hoped, however naively, that we were past that. I do not hold you responsible, but your arrival was certainly a lethal catalyst. May I help you? I maintain a steadfast neutrality. You must make your own determination. With frightening regularity, as bad as this was, three years ago the streets were full. Until Genghis Khan struck, we've a third of our number since that day. Fewer now. So your mission to the Beagle was a success? Let me see. It is... done. There is a standard cipher used by the facility. It took me many years and, well, lifetimes to overcome. And now, the mysteries of the facility await you. I pray you choose what befalls us wisely.
I must confess, the hum of a grav drive makes me feel alive. You want me to carry something for you? That's it then. What is this place? It's not on any surveys I know of.
Surely all this death will be What was long sought after is upon us. Change. Not all on Crucible will approve of what you have done, but doing what is right is seldom easy or free of difficulty. You have given us all a chance for self-determination. Maybe in time we will be worthy of going to the stars. For some of us, that will be a rude awakening. You have my enduring thanks. And any time you need safe harbor, know that Crucible is here for you.